welcome to the National Portrait Gallery and to this installation, Spaces Between Movement and Stillness. I've been so fortunate to have been working on this project where this installation was conceived as part of a gateway to the um, current exhibition called Australian Love Stories. This is the second exhibition of these heart forms that I've made. Um, and in this installation, I've been working on having a number of hearts displayed. There are 100, over 120 in the space and on each wall there are 60 and I was, or approximately 60, and I was looking at that idea of the resting heart rate and the sort of idea that we're still and that we can also be excited and that there is this interplay and difference um, between all of the forms and all of the expressions. I've been using the heart form for its ability to describe similarity and difference within people. And I've also been interested in bringing plasma into the forms for its ability to describe the idea of electricity within the body. I've been working with glass for a long time and the developments of light and glass have developed in step. Um, we're looking at technologies that are hundreds of years old with this gas discharge illumination. A gas discharge illumination requires a glass envelope, an evacuated form like we've had a look at already, and then for that to be sealed inside and the gas to be excited and to go through an ion cascade in order to create um, ionization and illumination. So for this work, it, I haven't just been wanting to look at creating light, I've been wanting to make pieces that reflect different kind of experiences that we have. Um, some racing, kind of crackling, excited feelings, and then some beautiful, just glowing discharges that I guess are akin to looking at an aurora within a bottle. So I'm, I'm really thrilled that I could work here at the Portrait Gallery and create something that is an encompassing space. And as you see um, around the room, there's that sort of idea of going through a spectrum of colour and being able to see the differences between all of the different forms. At this end of the installation are the forms that are predominantly filled just with a low tour of neon in order to create that sort of softer glow. In this form, it's probably a good example of um, the use of krypton and neon within the form and also um, that idea of uh, creating a dusting of phosphor at the back of the form, which kind of softens and creates, um, I guess, sparkles of the red phosphor at the back that we can see through that front face of the glass. Within the work, there are various different effects and affects that I'm um, exploring. And some of it is that sort of very low glow discharge where Predominantly in the red spectrum of the work, there are the um, mostly just filled with very low tour neon, and that creates that beautiful discharge glow. Whereas the more crackly light that with um, that is probably in that sort of blue green spectrum is predominantly um, a mix with the xenon gas, creating that really sort of bright, sparkly lightning effect. I've I've enjoyed using Xenon more than Krypton um, to get that effect um, because within my practice, I don't like to use the halides or the iodine um, within the processing. 
So I end up using the xenon, which is uh, a more rare and more precious gas, but um, I've been very fortunate that I've been able to um, achieve some of those effects just using a small mix of xenon within. All of the works have um, a base of neon gas within them. And I think for me, that's been really um, lovely, I guess, because of the modern parlance and association with neon, but also that idea of that red glow, that energetic red. Because these works are blown from furnace glass and um, I work in my studio with my partner, Matthew Curtis, um, sometimes we have clear glass in the furnace, sometimes we have different tints of colour in the furnace. So the different hues that um, I've been able to achieve are partly through the colour of the light, partly through the colour of the glass, partly through adding veneers of colour of glass. And in some of the works I've been um, applying just a certain area of one veneer of colour in order to highlight sort of an aspect of the of the form. So this means that you sort of perceive different colours, but because of the difference between additive and subtractive um, colour making, um, it's been quite a journey to discover what sort of colours you end up achieving. I think that it sort of blew my mind the first time I turned one of the pink hearts on and it reads as blue, and that's because the pink light um, is absorbed within the form and we then perceive that sort of bluer spectrum of light. Uh, these colours here, or this sort of blue effect, um, is partly through phosphors in the glass, but particularly with this piece, um, this is an example of a form that is blown with a veneer of ruby red um, glass within a clear um, mass of the material. And this is one of those forms where the filter of the pink glass makes it so that we see the blue um, once the gas is ionised. Mind blowing. <laughs>One of the more recent things I've been experimenting with, and it's been um, since I was able to do a study and research tour to the States to visit a lot of my amazing colleagues from the Plasma Art Alliance, um, is working with uh, phosphors within the form. And that's a different way then of using light to create an effect within the glass, um, particularly working with um, Mundi Magical Hepburn and um, with Wayne Stratman, I've gotten some really fantastic tips on how to uh, apply the um, phosphors within the glass. I've been using the Mundy Hepburn beach sand technique in order to create just a light dusting uh, within the form. The thing that I've been sort of realising that works best for me is to try and apply the phosphor just to the back of the form in order that you can see the light, but you uh, see the effect of the phosphor, phosphor, but you're not having to look through the phosphor in order to see it. So I've been trying to apply gently um, before processing a small dusting of the phosphor at the back and then tipping the excess phosphor and sand out. And that creates almost like a galaxy-like um, velvety effect on the back of the form that is excited by um, UV light and then creates a colour that we, we register. So the forms that I've used phosphor in, I have um, used the small amount of neon gas and then um, inserted xenon gas and the xenon gas gives off a, a light in the, more light in the UV spectrum. So that enables me to then um, exploit that effect of the phosphors. I think that one of the really fantastic things about working on a project at this scale and having quite a repeatable process, even though there are a lot of similarities and differences within the forms, is that I've been building a lot of knowledge. 
but I also can really appreciate that I've got so much more to learn. There's so much um, nuance it, within the architecture of the interior of the forms, the mix of the gases. I really have almost no idea about the uh, electromagnetic side of it. I can't wait to understand that some more. Um, I feel really privileged that I'm working in a space where I'm excited about being able to blow glass, being able to learn, use electricity and explore those ideas of energy within the body, energy within art. So thanks for visiting.